Warning. This episode of TSM Talk contains some explicit language, opinions, and Duncan. Though we love him, he can get carried away. Enjoy the show, guys. What's going on, guys? It's Six here from TGN and TSM, bringing another great episode of TSM Talk, the gaming news talk show. Now, we are on episode 9 this week. We uh, took a week off last week because we wanted to play some Battlefield 3, and we'll be talking more about that later. Also, if you guys are interested in joining or even participating in TSM Talk, please leave a comment down below or go to my personal channel at youtube.com slash hicks16 or click the annotation at the top right to go to it and just leave me a PM and I'll get back to you as soon as possible with information. And so we're just going to go right into our topics today. Now, our first topic is going to be about BlizzCon. Now, I do know a lot of directors have already covered all this stuff, but there are some things that they didn't really mention, and I really want to tell you guys. And also, I had a personal experience with a Blizzard uh, employee and kind of found out some information you actually have to do. And I kind of find it a little messed up and a little not smart, dumb. I don't want to say retarded, but uh, there's, there's a little issue with what I heard. And then we're going to go on to the newest trailer that was released by Rockstar, GTA V. And we'll be talking a lot about this later on in the show. And then we're going to move on to Modern Warfare 3. Now, everyone knows what the Call of Duty series is. Modern Warfare 3 is actually developed by Infinity Ward and two other companies. So it's going to be a very different type of game. The old Infinity Ward was dismantled last year or two years ago. I believe it was last year. So it's a brand new Infinity Ward, really. And because Zempel and them aren't there anymore. So... I'm really looking forward to this game. Actually, I want to see what this, these new companies have actually done to the game, uh, for good or worse. And then we're going to finally move on to the last story, and or the last set of stuff we're going to be talking about, which is Battlefield 3. Now, we've had a whole week to play it. I've been enjoying it. That's all I've been doing. And I am ready to go. I'm ready to go, guys. We've got a lot to talk about, so sit tight and enjoy the show. What's going on, Duncan? How are you doing today? Um, I'm not playing Battlefield, so I'm doing pretty crappy right now. Why? It's just Battlefield. You can take a break and do a show for a little bit. No, I can't. You can't? I'm, I'm actually, I'm playing it right now. <laughs> in windowed mode? In window? <laughs> no, not in windowed mode. Are you crazy? Are you crazy, man? No, in order to, to get the most out of the beautiful graphics of Battlefield 3, I'm running it full, full scale. You're actually playing, you're able to play on Ultra and stuff? Uh, yes, I am. That's nice, because I've been playing. I, be, I get to play on ultra. I'm playing only at like 45 FPS. Everything on ultra, so it's still really nice. So I, I'm enjoying. It. I can't record it at ultra. I got to actually like dumb my stuff down to like medium to be able to record at 60 frames if I want to record at high. So, but mm-hmm. um, we'll talk more about Battlefield 3. But I kind of want to move on to the first set of the discussion, which is BlizzCon. Now I know this happened like two weeks ago. And a lot of people have already covered it. You know, you guys know the basics. World of Warcraft got a new expansion pack that introduced a new race, a new world, and a new class. You know, the the new class, is it's been a while since there's been a new class. And so it's really exciting to see that uh, this class allows you to actually choose if you want to go Horde or Alliance at level 10. And uh, it's kind of like a... It's a panda. That's that's what your race it's is. A panda. It's a panda, and I kind of find that kind of goofy. It is in the World of Warcraft lore, so it's part of the story. I just find it. To so be... you like eat bamboo and stuff? No, like, like you're you're a monk. Like his, there's there's the speciality or, or the the thing they try to show off was you can be a monk class with this character. I don't know what other classes you can be, but uh, you know I kind of find it funny that they would choose a panda. I mean. I, if, even if it's in the lore, I would have th- went with something else because it's the new world you get is like an Asian environment, uh, and it's so I don't know. I just find it very stereotypical of what they did, like the characters they chose and stuff. Um, but it's whatever. Everyone at uh, BlizzCon was super excited about it. You know, of course, you know you got your huge Blizzard fi- or uh, World of Warcraft fans that love anything that Blizzard says. I have to do with World of Warcraft. You know, along with this, they introduced, I don't know if they introduced it, but it's the first time I've ever heard of it, called the World of Warcraft Annual Pass. or And uh, basically, I have no clue what it is, because I don't care, because I'll never use it. But the main thing they were trying to sell was, if you spent 12 extra dollars a month on top of your already WoW subscription fee, you can get the Diablo 3 game for free when it's released, as well as get beta access to the newest update, or the newest uh, expansion coming out. Which is pretty cool. You know, it sounds great at the beginning. All, all you hear is World or Diablo 3 for free. That's the only thing these kids were hearing. 
But if you think about it, if the game doesn't come out, let's say for another four to five months, if you times that by 12, you're spending anywhere between 48 to what, $60. And, you know, you could be actually overpaying for the game in the long run. So, you know, maybe they won't be, you know, I, I, and that's another thing they announced at BlizzCon is Diablo 3 is on the finishing path. Like it's at the, the straightaway, it's almost there at the finish line. And so, you know, these guys actually might get a deal in the long run. They're only paying maybe $36 for a Diablo 3, which would be really cool and a really big benefit. But at the same time, you know, you're already dumping all this money into the subscription fee. And now you have to pay an extra $12 a month just to get the game for possibly $15 cheaper. You know, you got to weigh your odds there. I don't know. I personally would not do it uh, just because I want to get like the limited edition and stuff like that. And that doesn't come with that t extra $12 a month. So... That's why, I don't know that that deal. The the announcement was kind of weird. I didn't like it, uh, but I'm not a I'm not a huge World of Warcraft fan. But uh, on to then Diablo. Like I said, it's on the 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 finish line is almost there. They're completely done. They're already in beta phases and stuff. They I think beta ends like December or it's gonna begin another section of beta in December because they're already giving out beta keys through Facebook and stuff like that. So. I'm crossing my fingers to possibly get one. I doubt I will, just because. Um, no. Nope. Well, this is what this is one of the things I want to bring up is. So I was on I my Battle.net account got hacked because I played Diablo 2 and it's really easy to get people's accounts, and it got hacked. You last... fell for a phishing scam, didn't you? No, no, no. I'm guessing someone just guessed my password and stuff because I've never given out my stuff. Was it I like little boys? No. <laughs> No, it wasn't. Okay, because that's what would have been my first guess. Oh, I'm sorry, but no, you you are the weakest link. But so they so they take my I had to go back and recover all my account stuff, which was no big deal. And then I find out the only way that I can really even give feedback or even look into anything regarding or give uh, posts and stuff on the Blizzard forums is if I own World of Warcraft or StarCraft Two. I have to own those games to post on their forums, which I find absurd. Now I understand. You know uh, why they'd be doing that because they only want pot, like feedback that has to do with the game and people that are actually playing it and stuff, which is fine and dandy. But you know, I had World of Warcraft back back in the day, so I had the game purchased, but I still can't post in that forum, which is weird. And uh, I can't even post in Diablo Three forum because I don't have a beta key, which is even more retarded. Because why? I want to maybe shoot out some ideas that could possibly change the game, you know? I just find that restriction pretty stupid. Um, I don't know what you think about that. I, I doubt you even care. <laughs> what are we talking about? Yeah, okay, that's what I thought. <laughs> and then the final thing that was announced at BlizzCon was... No, seriously, new... what are we talking about? <laughs> no, I'm not even going <laughs> through it again. So, another thing that was announced was StarCraft II's new expansion, Heart of the Swarm. Now, I haven't picked up StarCraft II yet, um, I'm not huge into RTSs. I did play a lot of StarCraft 1 when I was younger, but seeing the trailer that they released for StarCraft 2, showing all the new enemies and all the new, uh, what do you want to call them, uh, soldiers and stuff you can create, units, there we go, um, this makes me want to get StarCraft 2. Um, I know each game individually is going to be $60, so I'd have to drop $120 to get the Heart of the Swarm and the very first one. Um, I don't know if I really want to do that, but the game looks crazy good. I mean, I I don't watch a lot of MLG tournaments and stuff because I'm just not interested into in, interested in RTSs as much anymore. Nothing really revolutionary has come about, so it's not really spiked my interest. But I don't. I might. I might pick up StarCraft II later in the year just to play with because it just looks super awesome. And plus, the chick from Heart of the Swarm. I don't know her name. I don't even remember the story from the first one, but she's reborn basically. And she looks pissed off, and it looks awesome. And then, I don't think this was the final thing released, because I just watched about the first 30 minutes of the actual free streaming on their website when it was up. But they're coming out Blizzard Dota. Now, that's kind of cool, um, I guess, if you're a huge Dota fan. I've never played Dota, but it's kind of it, it, it's kind of like an RTS, but you play with like heroes and stuff like that. So it's kind of like Warcraft a little bit. But uh Dota, I believe, was part of Steam or something like that. Like, I got a message from Steam wanting me to opt in for the newest beta, or for, yeah, for the beta for Dota, the new Dota 2. 
and Blizzard come out has uh, announced a Blizzard Dodo. So you get to play all the characters from all the Blizzard games or some of the characters from Blizzard games. So that seems pretty neat and kind of interesting. You know, I might try uh, try something like that out over a game like StarCraft, um, just because I kind of like the Warcraft style play as well as the uh, what is it Warhammer 40k type play. That's kind of how Dota kind of plays like. So it's pretty interesting. Um, that's really about all that I have on BlizzCon. I really didn't keep too much up about it. The only thing I was really worried about and really interested at all during BlizzCon was Diablo 3 news, because that's the game I'm picking up when it comes out, and that's the game that I'm going to lose myself into, just like Duncan's losing himself in Battlefield 3. It'll be me with Diablo 3, so... Uh, do you have anything you really want to say, Duncan? What are we talking about? Okay, so I think it'll wrap up the BlizzCon... Uh, discussion. Now we're going to move on to GTA 5. Trailer was released, what, two days ago, I believe it was? On Tuesday? So, what, yesterday? No, Tuesday, yeah. It was released on Tuesday. And all I got to say is, thank goodness it is finally out. I am so excited for GTA 5. You know, I just want to now hear more and more. Um, Duncan, what are your thoughts on the trailer so far? Well, since GTA is an actual game that I care about, I like the way that they went with GTA 4 with the terms of the story and still having that serious story but having a bunch of tongue-in-cheek humor. I mean, piss Wasser, this is beer, drive drunk off a pier is something that I sing on a regular <laughs> basis whenever I see a beer commercial. Um, my, my personal hopes is that, once again, it shows it's, I believe it's in Los Angeles this time, and the character models look much, much better. The engine has been reworked. You can definitely see a lot of roots from Red Dead Redemption in there. So I'm assuming the people that helped make that, and it's all the same engine, but the people who helped develop it on that engine are helping them out on this engine. And I'm looking forward to many of the different things that I'll be able to do in GTA and all the trouble that I can get up to. Of course... The online multiplayer is a must for me. I've spent three years playing GTA 4 online and still has not gotten boring because every day it's like a movie. Yeah, I, play GTA. I absolutely love playing GTA 4 online. There's always something to do and always something to make you laugh that keeps you playing. I mean, we were just looking at some of the mods before we even came in here, and seriously, like, they were so hysterical, like, what you said, they changed the friction, and so, like, cars and shit were just flying all over the place, and you get hit by them all the time, like, that would be hysterical. Carmageddon. Carmageddon. <laughs> I'll put, uh, definitely let you guys see what we're talking about in the video, but, uh, yeah, I'm just really excited. A lot of people have been speculating it was the, uh, what, Tommy Versetti? Ver Versetti? Versetti? Yeah, Versetti. Versetti. A lot of people are thinking that it, that was the guy narrating, but uh, personally, and looking at a lot of comments, it's not. I don't think they're gonna try and go back on storylines and try to connect them. I really do think they're gonna start a brand new storyline like they usually do, because uh, I think it works out. I think the game works out better that way, and they're able to make a more in depth story doing that than actually trying to continue on a story, uh, because they might leave parts out, etc. So. Um, I'm really looking forward to it. Like you said, the game engine looks way updated from GTA 4. I mean, immensely. Um, it's pretty bright. It kind of reminds me of Vice City on, on like color-wise. So yeah, I'm I'm super pumped. I mean, I played just like you. I played two years. I played only two years of GTA 4, but I still have fun with it. I even played the campaign more than once. And mm -hmm. uh, so just knowing how much there is to do in the GTA games for it being an open world, basically a huge sandbox. Um, definitely looking forward to GTA 5, and I we will definitely keep everyone updated on anything new we hear uh, regarding GTA, G, D, GTA 5, Jesus, and uh, with trailers or anything like that. <laughs> Broken record over here. Grand Theft Auto 5. Are you, is, there any, is there any things that you want to see maybe in the next trailer that they release? Well, I already saw something that I was hoping for, the fact that Jets are back, so all of you people who want to kamikaze people on the street can now do so. The helicopters, once again. Uh, I hope that they have, this time, for multiplayer play, is missiles that or a stinger or something like that that locks on, because it gets really annoying when someone just sits in a helicopter and is a helicopter whore the whole damn game. 
<laughs> I was saying, I never experienced that. I mean, anytime I played, I played with you and Zach and uh, Ted, and the only thing we would do is just run around and just ramp off stuff to do tricks. And like my favorite place was going to the airport and ramping off into those like that pier of boxes. Like that was the mm-hmm. most exciting thing for me. I have no clue why. You're easily entertained. You should try jumping out of cars. You should try jumping out of the car when it goes over the uh, the ramp. Then it gets way more intense, dude. Way more intense. Uh, the ramp into the pier? Any ramp doesn't uh, matter where. No, I just, I just want, I just want more in this game. Like these, this type of game can literally like is like the best time waster, but at the same time you get lost in it too. Um, so, you know, if this was a game I had to choose for next... I'm pretty sure this will probably come out next year. Um, I don't think they'll release it this year. Or, like, like this this There's next coming no year. no way in hell this they're coming releasing year. it. Like, this coming year. I don't think it'll be released till like, 2013. Probably, like, quarter one. Because... When we're all dead because of the apocalypse. Exactly. So it'll be a waste of their time. Damn. I just not thought of that. Well, let's just hope that her world doesn't come. Well, I've got my tinfoil hat, so, you know, <laughs> you can stop worrying Never fear, goofballs here. All right, do you want to move on to Call of Duty now? Is that, I mean, I don't got anything uh, else to say. I mean, it's Call just... of Duty, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2.5. That's what, what it is. That's what it is. It really is. I mean, uh, not to burn any bridges here, but in all honesty, it really is just it's an expansion pack. You just blow the bridge up. You don't burn it. You just blow it up. Because I mean, like, if you look at, I mean, Modern Warfare 3 is coming out next Tuesday. Um, there hasn't, I haven't even looked at the pre-order list. No one's been really talking about, talking about it. It's not been getting a lot of, uh, I don't know, commercial hype is what Battlefield 3 did. I know there's a lot changing with Modern Warfare 3 because it is made by a different company. I mean, it is still the Infinity Ward, but it's a brand new Infinity Ward because Zempella and the rest of the guys from the old Infinity Ward left, uh, Activision as a whole and went and created their own company. And so we've got Activision and two other companies uh, like Ravensoft and uh, Sledgehammer Games all working on this new Call of Duty, which in turn could be very positive. Uh, Personally, I think it could be positive. And I think this game will actually do pretty well. It will definitely be way better than Black Ops, without a doubt. Black Ops was a complete fail. Um, Black Ops had a cool story and everything, but didn't like multiplayer at all. Yeah, multiplayer. what I'm really looking forward to, if anything, in Modern Warfare is just the single-player story. I just want to see how it ends. Because it, the single-player is what Call of Duty has always been about. The multiplayer was just... it was. If you look at it from Call of Duty 1 onwards, it really doesn't strike me as anything that was really groundbreaking until you could call in start calling in kill streaks and stuff like that. And kill streaks and perks are really all that set this game apart. Um, as much as I hate to say it, you know, I'm probably not even going to pick this up. I don't know. Maybe. I might I might pick it up on the PC just because, you know, or I might pick it up on the Xbox because I might have some friends playing it. Probably not. They've all, they've all been playing the crap out of Battlefield. We are all almost level 45. Holy cow! I'm not even thirty yet. Yeah, I'm I'm thirty five right now. Jesus, I play almost every day, but I don't play like all day. I've been doing a lot of TGN stuff, so I haven't been able to. Well, just... unlike you, I've been MIA from everything. You probably haven't seen me until today. Yeah, no, I haven't seen you till today. <laughs> <laughs> I told I... you I was gonna play the shit out of Battlefield. No, but, I mean, there's a lot of good features coming into Modern Warfare 3, and features that I'm actually pretty happy about. There is one negative, one negative feature. Uh, They did say they're bringing dedicated servers back, which is cool, but if you have a dedicated server that you personally buy, it's unranked. So anything, you can't upgrade your levels, you can't get yourself in the, the, the top score or the stats area, like, it's just... That you'll never get anyway, Hicks, because you suck. I don't think so. But, uh, but you can so. still you can still play. They still have dedicated servers that are public and stuff. But the fact that they're getting rid of people that buy servers to actually customize them to like a gun game or something, and not allowing you to progress through levels is a little not. I just find that really like Retarded. a big a big smack in the face to PC. They're like, yeah, you guys get dedicated servers. 
but they're unranked. So okay, I fun. I just want to point something out. All right, and all of the all of the media that I've ever seen, and you'll probably realize this when you go back and you look at it from you hear me talking about it. The, who who the hell's that creative director or whatever that they've got for Modern Warfare that's always talking about the kill streaks and stuff and he's always wearing he's really skinny dude bald and he's always wearing glasses. I don't know. I don't pay you attention don't, to developers. You don't know? I, like, I hate Activision as a company. <laughs> like every single time I see it, it's this really skinny nerdy guy going, "God, please can be freaking awesome. We got new kill streaks and he's just got this like wisp that just." <laughs> you know, he's obviously like crapping his pants because he's so excited. And then you see, you see Battlefield. You see them interview the interview, or it's like, yeah, we spent, we spent, uh, we went out on some combat exercises with some real troops in order for our sound to be as realistic as possible because we're trying to focus on bringing together a complete. And then it's Call of Duty's like, oh my god, this guy will be in there. <laughs> oh my god. Like seriously, <laughs> just take a look at. I, he's like, it's gonna be awesome, awesome. I, <laughs> you know why? Cause I just came in my pants. Oh my goodness! <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! Anyway, <laughs> like, I I I just recently discovered this watching like inside Xbox videos and everything because I'm because I'm waiting for Battlefield to load up or. I'm waiting for my friends to get on Battlefield. Because, honestly, I don't really give two craps about... And it's not the fact that I'm a Battlefield fanboy. I played both series from Call of Duty 1 onward, and I've played from Battlefield 1942 onward. It's just I find more entertainment after uh, flying around in a helicopter, shooting down people, jumping out, parachuting, base jumping 150 feet, blowing up tanks, flying jets... Instead of just sprint, 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 run around the corner, sprint, 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 lay clay, more sprint, 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 shoot, shoot. Yeah, I understand where you're coming from, but I mean, the things that this, that they're trying to actually implement into the game now seem a little bit more balanced and kind of go back to the Modern Warfare 1 roots, more or less than going trying to match what Modern Halo Warfare 2 had. Roots. So, like, one of the big things that I've seen, like, they had this thing, I believe it was in Modern Warfare 2 called Death Streaks, and you get, like, little perks if you die too much because you, you suck. You suck, like picks. So, I mean, those are back, which isn't bad, and it usually doesn't hurt many people, and it doesn't really bother people. But the thing they're really trying to change is they're, it's, instead of kill streaks, you get what's called point streaks. It kind of goes to what Medal of Honor had, where, let's say you get three kills, you have a decision to make. You can make, you know, something that's going to help just you out, something that's going to help your team out, or something, uh, I don't know what the third thing is, uh, shoot, a support package, an assault package... And package from mommy. So, like, you have, I think it's just actually two, assault package and support strike package. And basically, it's just, like, offense and defense type things. Instead of, like, you get 12 kills, and now you get the most OP thing in the entire game. Um, and it seems like they've got the kill streaks, uh, or I wanna, I'm going to call them kill streaks, because that's what they basically still are. They've got them a lot further spread out, so... The highest kill streak is 17 kills in a row to get uh, the Osprey Gunner. So I guess it takes a lot longer to get really good kill streaks, which is better than what it used to be. Um, well, the thing is that uh, I don't like about that is if I'm playing against a team that's just noob tubing or anything like that, and I don't have any chance to experience all these amazing kill streaks that Modern Warfare boasts. I mean, are they doing it based? They're, you said they're doing it based off of points. Because I'd rather be that player that you know. That's how I, that's how I do so well in Battlefield. Is I'm always throwing down ammo packs or anything like that, or I'm always uh, I'm always capping bases. It doesn't matter what game I'm playing. I'm doing the objective. I'm playing what the objective is. If the objective is to kill other people. Then I'm killing other people. But if it's something else, I'm spending my my collective time trying to do that. I think uh, they do. I think I think with the new uh, style of gameplay, they actually re do reward you for actually playing the objective. So the player that likes, like you, who likes to play the objective, you actually get rewarded for doing that. I think it's just more points, but I'm not too sure. Um, but they they did add a bunch of new game modes, which is what's really selling the game to me. Not the game, it's not the gameplay itself, because Call of Duty is always going to be Call of Duty. It's going to be an arcade, fast-style, run-and-gun type ga game. It's they're, I'm not trying to be mean, I'm not trying to bash Call of Duty, but Call of Duty is not a pure skill-based game. It's You really don't have to have a lot of skill to do well. Um, Bro gamers are gonna get mad. 
I mean, I, I enjoy Call of Duty. I play all the Call of Duties, and I really, I do really well at Call of Duty, as you can see from any of my YouTube videos. Because it's not a skill-based shooter. Right. So, <laughs> <laughs> I you just walked that. right into that one with your logic. But there, there are two new game modes that are ranked, and actually you can, that you don't have to go into private lobbies for, are is Kill Confirmed and Team Defender. Now, Kill Confirmed is like TDM, but to only get points... You have to collect their dog tags once they're down, once they're dead. So if you kill someone, you actually don't get that kill unless you collect their dog tag. And let's say you get killed and they collect your dog tag, then you know they, uh, vice versa, take points away. But if let's say you get killed and your teammate picks up your dog tag, you guys don't lose any points. So that's really cool. Team Defender is like capture the flag, but there is no base that you return it to. You just hold on to the flag. I'm trying to remember what Halo game that used to be. There, I swear to God, there was a Halo match where you had to hold the flag as long as possible. It was um no, it's it's oddball. Stupid. Oddball. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. Oddball with the flag. It's yeah. not. It's not anything new or groundbreaking. No, I know, but I'm just saying they. That's a new game mode they brought into Call of Duty. I mean, Except just, it was a skull, and I could make as many alas poor Yorick I knew him well jokes as I beat your head in with it. <laughs> uh, some of their uh, private. Game modes is Infection, Halo, Drop Zone, Halo, Team Juggernaut, and is... I'm trying to think what well, game was kind of like Juggernaut. I'm pretty sure Halo, uh, Juggernaut, Halo, Gun Game, Counter-Strike, and One in the Chamber, which was the first thing that Black Ops brought. But hopefully they fixed the Gun Game, because the Gun Game sucked in Black Ops. I wish you could actually customize that game mode to where you could play through all the weapons, instead of just like 12 of them or something like that. But, yeah, I, I just like... But it's Call of Duty! It's Call of Duty. We didn't steal anything. Everything's Call original. <laughs> but I just find it funny that all these game modes are, like, standards in most FPS games. Not in all, like Battlefield. It's not in all, or Counter-Strike. But, like, games like on the console, like Halo, all these, Infection, Drop Zone, Juggernaut, were all basic game game modes in Halo. I and mean, then... if, you want, if you want to look at fair, balanced online gameplay that focuses on, you know, fun for the user and everything like that, and not just sprint, 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 because it really doesn't have much sprint, I would look at the Halo games. Yeah. Speaking of which, the Halo uh, anniversary is coming out November 15th, and that is definitely on my game list, because even though I still have Halo 1 that I bought over 10 years ago. Yeah, me too. About cause... 10 years ago, because Halo 1 is OP. <laughs> is the, the fact that I seriously I want to see the graphical remakes that they've done as as well as the multiplayer that they've got in store for using all the old maps and everything. All the old maps are coming back. Sidewinder, I hope. I hope it's all maps. I'm pretty sure it is. I mean, you know, like Wizard, um, the what was that? Chill out. Hang 'em high. Chill out. Hang 'em high. All those good old classics are coming back. I it, seriously like if I if I see really good reviews, it might push me to getting an Xbox to get the game, because uh, that's why I bought my original Xbox was for Halo One. I never bought hardly any games for my original Xbox. Like the Halo series is the main reason I bought it. So if if the remake is that good, it might make me buy a new Xbox, and I would become what a console it? gamer. Uh-oh. No, you wouldn't. <laughs> you'd, you'd be like me. You you console. You'd moonlight in the console, and then you'd play PC. Yeah, that's true. Um, let's see, another feature that's brand new to the Call of Duty series, but kind of, like, everything they bring in is, like, standard in all games, and they call it new and innovative. But the Call of Duty Elite, now, I know a lot of people hate it. It's a pay-to-play, and not a pay-to-play. You have to pay for the subscription, and with the subscription, you get, like, all these extra things, like the DLC comes faster to you. You get more video storage for your... Um, recordings which does let me know then you get to record your matches which is cool but seriously eight times more storage like how much storage are you, are you only going to get like three matches i mean you know like if you're gonna do some call of duty porno or something like that then you might need quite a bit of um storage there the not ab- that i'd know anything about that <laughs> the ability to level up your clan and earn exclusive in-game prizes i don't know where they'd be trying to take this uh, captain price is the pitcher <laughs> oh my goodness uh i see we get you basically get this you get if you pay for it, you get this all this special stuff one of the main things and i see only really being beneficial 
is the Elite TV. Basically, it's like anything that has to do with Call of Duty. They can like live stream your gameplay or whatever. I think that would be pretty cool if you're one of those people that want to get suck. Well, I mean, if you want to get noticed or get on an MLG team or something, that would be a way to get initiated into it. But other than that, all the things that you get for the paid version seems completely pointless. Like, I don't care that I can level up with my level up my clan. I don't care that if I get DLC early, you know, if I'm gonna get DLC, I'll just get it when it comes out, you know. But, I mean, other than that... So you can pony new nudes on the map because you played beforehand. Uh, the, I'm trying to think, there was song. a game mode that is coming to... Uh, it's like... I want It's like Horde. It's like Horde mode, kind of. But you... I think it's two to four players. It's, it's, bla- it's the takeoff of Nazi Zombies, which was developed by Treyarch. And right. Treyarch, I actually liked because every single time that they make a damn Call of Duty game, the story would be great. Story, I mean, World of War, uh, except for... Did they make three? They made three, didn't they? What? Three what? Call of Duty 3. Yeah. I think. Uh, yeah, they made Treyarch. We'll, yeah, we'll just mark that one down as a mistake. Yeah, that was a mistake <laughs> one. They, they get, the, you know, two out of three ain't bad. But, I mean, like, this, this new mode, it does seem pretty interesting, because it's kind of like zombies, but... You when you play, you get like your perks and stuff. You can order, you know, help from the sky. You can get guys to drop down, like spec op teammates helping you. I mean, it sounds like a pretty good game mode, and that's what really attracted me on all the trailers that really wanted me to actually get the game was just to play spec ops, like to play co op with people. You know, I I could hardly multiplayer will always be the same multiplayer, but I need something else that I can do with just like one or two buddies, you know. And so bringing back spec ops is really nice. Um, and this game mode could sell the game for me because that's all I'd really play more or less than the the multiplayer itself. I just see the multiplayer being broken because it's just it's Call of Duty. There's nothing. Are, there, new. are they going to have a beta for it at no. least? No. No. No beta? It comes out next week. Like, it comes out next week. I mean, look, okay. Once again, sounds like I'm a Battlefield 3 fanboy, but I'm ta- I'm talking beta wise like the beta was pretty broken for Battlefield 3, I'm not going to lie. Yeah, going was. through the map and everything, and now look at it online. It's a, apart from those stupid freaking server issues that EA has every time they release a freaking first-person shooter. PC was fine. I don't know what you, what you console boys are talking about. I had fine. Yeah. Oh, fine. my God. The Xbox 360, it's <laughs> most popular on Xbox 360 in terms of sales. Like, a lot of people have bought this on the 360, yeah. and they just, they just couldn't handle it. Like... You you advertise a game that much, you're going to get noticed, and you're going to have a lot of people going to buy it. But I guess the server traffic will die down after Call of Duty, or excuse me, yeah, Call of Duty comes out. Yeah, it will, a little bit. I mean, it's a hard transition for Call of Duty players, and I think a lot of Call of Duty players tried out Battlefield 3, and I think some of them liked it, and I see a lot of people not liking it. Uh, if you're a Call of Duty fan, it's just a really hard learning curve for most of them, so... I mean, you it, actually need to adjust for bullet drop snipers. <laughs> but so I think that's all I really have on Modern Warfare Three, or what we have on Modern War- Warfare Three. Man, my pr- pronunciation today <laughs> sucks, man. I cannot get it straight today. <laughs> but you know, my name is Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> but there's nothing really brand new, like that's. Like I was going to do on my Innovation Question Mark series, I was going to talk about this game in particular, but I ended up canceling it because of certain things. But what I'm trying to point out is there's nothing game-breaking or innovative to this to this franchise or to this game in general. Every game has had this style of game modes and things like that. The only thing that Call of Duty really brings is the killstreak system, but other than that... <laughs> the multiplayer... <laughs> the multiplayer is still the same. The game modes that they have now have been in previous games and have always done well, so I really just don't see anything brand new with the game. I mean, so I would just... I don't know. I'm probably going to pick it up still because I like to play Call of Duty, and it's actually a really fun game. But I would just like for a company like Activision with so much with so much money and so much potential to create something groundbreaking and brand new. <laughs> would you shut up? Seriously. <laughs> so um, I think that'll wrap up Modern Warfare 3. And I want to move on to Battlefield 3 because that's all me and Duncan have been playing all week. 
Ooh. I'm gonna let you just start because I have nothing bad to say. Like they have their little issues. They already know it. They've already even said they're coming out with the patch in like the next couple of weeks that are gonna fix a bunch let's of graphical. Let's start stuff. out with the bad. All right. As a PC player, I've I've played PC and I've played Xbox PC way way better in terms of multiplayer. Uh, I'm just gonna come out and say it. My friends, my friends know. I've I've raved about it because I played 64 man on Sienna Crossing or however the hell you pronounce that damn map name. Um, Most amazing I, map ever. Just saying. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's one of it's pretty good because uh, the fact that you're tight quarters with vehicles. It makes for an interesting balance of gameplay. Yeah, it's I mean, insane. I mean, I had, have, you, have you seen my live commentary yet? Yes, I've did. seen your live commentary that you're probably going to plug and put in the <laughs> comments of this video. Yes, I am. do yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at that. I, I just did your advertisement for you. You should start paying me. But no, um, the, 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 the PC, of course, designed for the 64 players. The maps are way different in terms of size. In terms of vehicles, in terms of which game modes are fun to play on, I play Conquest religiously on the Xbox because in Rush you have to rely on your team. In Conquest you can rely on your squad, and I have a very good squad or two squads put together that we constantly have played together since Battlefield. I played with some of these cats on Battlefield 2. I've played Battlefield since 1942, so I. I definitely know what I'm doing when I'm playing in terms of a class-based warfare and helping out my team. Um, let's see. The things that are bad. On certain maps, there is a, there is a latency issue. Tehran, uh, the Tehran Highway. Yeah, that's there, really bad. There, there's a lot of lag on that map. Caspian Border, a lot of lag. It, it's really, it doesn't really affect you that much if you're on the ground or anything like that. But it can get really annoying when you're someone like me who's a really good pilot and enjoys flying a lot when all of a sudden you teleport into the ground. Yeah, I've had some of those. I don't usually fly just because I, I need a joystick to fly the jets in this game. Helicopters are easy. You know, I can do tilt and stuff like that. But the jets, I don't. you will not see me. The only time you'll see me in there, if I want to just go kamikaze it or if I'm on Caspian border, I go up to that huge red and white tower and I go to the very top as a sniper. And I'll just sit there and snipe people from up there, but still haven't sniped from up there. I need to do that. Thank oh, you. It's awesome because no one can get you; only you can get them. But you have to really figure out where your bullet's gonna drop and everything. I think I go up to. Like... All right, my my highest record for a shot is 481 marksman. Mine's bonus. mine's six something, and that's on oh. Caspian border. <laughs> They're probably standing still. My guy was on the move. Oh my! Yeah, he was standing still. Trying yeah, to get the he flag. was probably AFK too. <laughs> Don't even give me that, Mr. I'm going to snipe people waiting for the jets in their base. No, no, no. I usually look at, like, A or, A or, yeah, A where the tower's at, or D, I think, is near their base. But, yeah, those are the two I really look at. But, anyway, so, yeah, can continue with your bad. Sorry, didn't mean to interrupt. I said to put that out there. It's all right, Mr. I snipe AFK people and then brag about it. No, um, also, the squad system needs to be fixed. The join-on squad, because in the xbox version you don't launch from a web browser which i find really weird for battlefield 3 on the pc is everything's done from the web browser i'd rather just run the game itself and then choose multiplayer campaign or anything like that i do like the fact that you can drag any of your friends that you have on battle logs and drag them and send them an invite immediately but personally i think that the Xbox way that they do it is better. The fact that it's a standalone run run of a game. It's two discs on Xbox. So you have to switch discs if you want to play campaign or if you want to play multiplayer and co-op, which is really retarded. I don't like that at all either. Uh, what else do I... I do not like the fact that, like I was saying with squad, sometimes it'll put people on the other team. Or the fact that if you join with... I don't get it. What the hell is up with games now? Thinking that you only have four friends. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> I mean, come on. I mm, four friends. That's it, and that's all I can play with in my squad. It doesn't really keep the teams together. I have like eight people that I'll play with at a given time, and we'll all break off into two four-man squads, and we'll just sit there and dominate and coordinate between each other and everything. But then it'll split us up. It'll split us up, and then it's almost impossible to find another server. Because you either... Though, the good thing is, 
the Xbox version has a server browser. I was pretty impressed by that. I've never, I've seen very few games implement a server browser effectively. You can filter out whether you want to play infantry or if you want to play with vehicles, you want to play rush, conquest, team deathmatch, anything like that. Something that has been a staple of PC gameplay, but it's on the Xbox and you can join off of your friends and there's an actual queue to joining a server. So you can sit there and wait and go, you know, do do your thing, the or you can go make a sandwich or something like that. Come back and you'll be in the game with your friends. And the fact that you can choose what kind of squad you which squad you want to be in, that's a really good thing too. Instead of oh well, I'm in this squad, just try leaving the squad and find another squad. It's like it keeps putting me in the same squad. No, it's like let's go to Alpha, let's go to Bravo, Charlie, Echo, Hotel, or any of those things. The good things, um, I'm going to do a collaborative effort with Hicks here on this, and I will jump in at things that I think he's missing. So go ahead, Hicks. Well, let me first say a couple of negative things before we go into the positive. Uh, I will agree on the, the squad system. I really think they should have allowed you to make custom squads like you could and I believe, Bad Company 2. Couldn't you make cu- custom squads in Bad Company 2? You mean, like, more than four people? No. No, not more than four people, but, like, make your own squad. Like, just say, yeah. I'm going to make squad Hicks or something. Oh, you could make your own. I didn't play Bad Company 2 that much because it was a console port, uh, so I played them on console. Uh, well, I know, like that's what I really wanted to see was allow us to have more than four people, allow us to make our own squads. Cause like I hate always being like, so what squad are you in? He's like, um, I think I'm in Alpha. I'm like, can you kick him? I'm in I'm in BFE. I'm like, can you can you kick him? No, I'm not squad leader. I'm like, really? Like I have to go join another squad now? Awesome. Now I'm playing with these kids that don't know what the hell they're doing. Or they're just, you know, flying the planes around, not trying to get anything. I'm like, come on, I just want to play with my friends. And you really can't do that on the PC version right now. Um, I think that's what this huge patch is. They've already announced a huge bug fit, all these bug fixes, a bunch of hardware fixes. They're optimizing some things. I know NVIDIA is trying to get out newer drivers because there's a little bit of, um, just a little bit of issues with the drivers right now. Not a lot, really. And, uh, but yeah, other than that, I really don't have any other negatives, like, there's nothing that much wrong with the game itself. Like, of it's course, a... ne- my negative is idiot teammates, as always. Yeah, uh, but it's that's amazing just when <laughs> when you all spawn in a helicopter. Yeah, I know that's not related to a game at all, but you spawn in a helicopter, and you're like, oh, good, let's let's ride. I'm gonna kick my feet back. I'm gonna relax and ride this one in. Oh my God, he's flying upside down into the ground. <laughs> yeah. Oh look, it's another retard. Who somehow got his pilot's license? Why are you wearing that big bug-eyed helmet? You don't deserve it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we'll go to we'll go to positives now. Positives, everything. Is that it? Can I? Are we done? <laughs> uh, positives is map design. Um, yeah. The way they implement each different map for each different game type is very expertly done. There is a couple balancing issues um, in terms of Sienna Crossing. Uh, once one side gets stuck across that bridge, the only way to get across is to swim across the river. But people obviously don't get the the fact that you can do that, and they just sit there and try to run across the bridge, which are choke points, and just constantly get murdered. Um, the fact that uh, darn it is so hard to come up with bad things. We're on good things. It doesn't matter. Or good things. It's excuse me to delve into something specifically that I love. The destruction. I love the fact that I don't even have to aim at this and, and bring a building. Or some bu- buildings do fall down, and they they hit. it's nothing like the Bad Company 2 where the building actually just falls down. It The roof can blow up. Every part of that building can blow up. The ones that are more permanent structures, the fact that you can sit there and drop debris from the rooftop on somebody's head is really funny. I don't like the fact that the assault class has the medic kit. I no, do like the psh, fact. No, no, that's fine. Get out of here. Uh, I don't like it because Go everybody home. plays assault. Everybody. No. Everybody wants every, to be... No, everyone on PC plays support. Because they have ammo. Because they can't aim. No, seriously. No, the M two four nine right now and the uh, the 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 last machine gun you get are so overpowered that's not even funny. Like the literally. Two forty Bravo or the M sixty. No, 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 the 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 Bravo one. Two forty Bravo. Yeah. The M M two four nine and the Bravo one are the most they better overpowered. Not nerf my two forty. No, they are going to nerf it because they, they are. No. You can snipe people from across the map. 
I I love the fact that I just put the extended mag on it. And exactly. Just walk and out just, and Rambo people. Yeah, you're, you're, oh! you're, one of those, you're one of those kids that I hate. Like, absolutely hate because you have to have no skill with the support class at all. You can just hold that bitch down and you're going to get just mounds of kills. Well, it's not my fault people run in my cyclone of bullets. No, it's those two guns are probably the only two guns that I find that are really overpowered. Um, especially the M249 since you unlock it so early. It, it wouldn't surprise me that... Mark 11, shut up. Mark 11, sniper rifles. The semi-automatic sniper rifles are annoying. So annoying. Uh, they're not one hit. If you play on normal, no, they're, they're not, not but hit. still, they're annoying. You get some freaking noob, just sit there and just put <laughs> like three shots into you while you're running across the map. <laughs> you get You get that noise... Yeah. It's just annoying. No, I mean, those are really the only two weapon things that I want them to change. Other than that, the game is pretty solid. It is, uh, it's like 500 times better than the beta. Like, the beta, if we compare the beta to what the game is now, the beta was complete dog shit. I mean, seriously. The, the beta was complete crap compared to what the game is now. They have completely redone the game. I mean, there are those little issues with the squad system, or some of the weapons are a little need to be nerfed a little bit, or some of them need to be actually brought up a little bit. But the game itself, the movement, the animations, the sounds, the the latency that you have with servers is much better. I mean, much better. I'm really mm-hmm. pleased on how much they improved in that time span for sure. So I mean, I I absolutely am 100% pleased. I have even got a couple people just from watching my gameplay commentaries to actually go out and buy the game. I know uh, Mike was one of them, and then about a few of my subscribers actually went and bought the game because of um, how amazing it is and how great it plays. Yes, it is amazing. I don't I don't really have much more to say than the fact that this is a game I'm going to be playing for a very long time. Oh, yeah. You have to play for a long time to unlock everything. Jesus Christ. Like, to get all the badges and stuff. I've only played, like, 40 hours, you know. Mm-hmm. I don't even know how many. I'm going to see how many I have right now. Let's see how many hours I got. Because we can do that with Battlefield's online stack tracking. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Call I... of Duty, where's that? Where is it? <laughs> uh, Where? If you pay, if you pay, you get it. I only have 18 hours. No. You I'm not even. 18 hours? Yeah, 18 hours. But um, I have I have a 1.5 KDR. What's your KDR? I didn't think so. Get out of here. What's your KDR? 1.5. 1. Oh. <laughs> oh, 1.79, bitch. Oh, nice. nice. Yeah, shut up. <laughs> I am amazing. And let, 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 me, let me just pull up my score per minute because I told you I'm a team player. People constantly either send me hate mail or they send me friend requests. Because I have done amazing. All right, my Xbox soldier. I have a I have a 2.46 win loss ratio. I my score per minute is 386. I'm 427. You probably fucking sit there and spam spot the whole time. No, uh, I play as a solid. I really that's really the only class I've played. Oh, so that's why it's so high. You just revive people all the time. Do you know how much time I played as an assault? Very very little. Um. I already have the support, the support service star one, and the engineer service star one. Uh, let's see, KDR. I played for 42 hours and 12 minutes. My KDR is 1.678. Nice. Kill assists. Hmm. Only quit 8% of the time, and it's probably because I've been lagged down at the damn game. Yeah, that's how mine was. I keep getting disconnected from servers, so I've got a 15%. But that's because the service crashed and stuff when they were doing all that update stuff, and it was real annoying. But, mm-hmm. So, as you guys can see, Battlefield 3 is a huge improvement from the beta. It is by far going to be better than Call of Duty. I don't care who you are. If you think Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 is going to be hundreds of times better uh, against Battlefield 3, you're quite mistaken. The game takes gaming and FPS shooters to a whole new level. Um Modern Warfare 3 is going to be a great FPS shooter, no doubt. I'm going to get it. I'm going to be playing it. But I'm just saying the innovations and the style of what Battlefield 3 has done is completely different. Um, It is like Battlefield 2. It is that same style gameplay, but how much they've invested into actually making sure animations are correct, sounds of guns are correct, um, you know, enforcing and making sure that the only way to win a Conquest match is if you play 
uh, with your friends or you play with groups of people that know what they're doing. So, I mean, this game has really done a lot to improve itself. And I think Battlefield 4, if they come out with it, is going to be even better. You got anything else? Not really. Um, the fact that I hate the fact they nerfed C4 because I loved using that as basically jihad jeeping everyone. <laughs> I constantly do that. C4, my stats on Bad Company 2, I've killed over 2,000 people with C4. I've thrown over 40,000 bricks of C4. I platinum C4 a very, very long time ago. I'm just n- I just now started platinuming like all my actual assault rifles. All right, guys. Well, I think that'll wrap up today's episode of TSM Talk. Again, if you would like to be featured in the next TSM Talk with me and Duncan, give me a comment down below or send me a private message over at my personal channel at Hicks16. And next time, I don't know what we're going to be talking about next time. I'm still going to be playing Battlefield 3. We're probably not even going to be here. Uh, You're (laughs) going to be talking about Skyrim. Oh, my God, Skyrim. No, I'm not even getting it. You're not not even getting it? I thought you were going to get it. Not until quarter two. I'm getting a quarter two. So you're copying me. You're copying <laughs> me because I'm cool. So just I like the guy from Call of Duty <laughs> can copy me. Uh, all right, guys. Well, hope you guys enjoyed this episode, and we'll see you guys next time. Peace. Okay. Later.